Hey, welcome to Performance Reviews, where I give you the review from the technician's point of view. And today I have a loop cordless vacuum. This is their first version of this machine. And those who are not familiar with loop, so loop came from a Kickstarter campaign started by formal Dyson engineers, and I guess one of them worked at McLaren as well. A lot to be said about starting your own company that demands a lot of respect. It gets a lot of respect from me. So in no time in this review, if I say something negative, this is their first product. So consider this a beta. Don't consider this a finished product. And I think Loop is very much like Tesla. You buy a Tesla not because it's a great car. You buy a Tesla because you are funding SpaceX and you are funding the potential future of technology. So keep that in mind when we're doing this review with the Loop. Now I am a vacuum technician and this is a bagless cordless machine, which is something I tend not to like. I don't see a lot of value in this sort of product especially in my particular house. But we're gonna go through the pros, the cons. I'm gonna take this thing apart later. We're gonna do a pickup test. You're going to leave this review knowing everything you need to know about this before you consider buying this machine. So stick around for the entire video. I know it might be a bit longer than some other vacuum reviews, but I am gonna tell you a lot of good information. One of the great things is to start off, they want this machine to be able to be repaired. So I think, again, that's a great thing. They have all the parts pretty much available on their website. And if they're not available, they're on like back order. They're, they will be available. So I really like that and I appreciate that. Again, having family and close friends who have gone through manufacturing, that's really a hard thing to do is make the product and have parts available and all that. However, this is the first try at their vacuum cleaner and the bar was set pretty low by their formal employer, Dyson. As we know, Dyson is but really a subpar brand and vacuum cleaner. Excellent marketing, but, and I've got a ton of videos I can link here if you wanna see why I don't like the Dyson V11 or the V15. I plenty of reasons why that's, you know, really behind a lot of modern technology. Now, the accessory holder is this clip-on job, which is borrowed from an old Eureka design. Um, they give you an upholstery, dusting brush combo. Uh, it's a little bit wider than the one Dyson gave you on your hand back. It's not a great tool. Then they gave you a nice long crevice tool, um, but you notice they did not cut the suction relief uh, holes in there. So I guess they decided that wasn't necessary. It's not really that powerful, so I don't think that would be that necessary. Um, they also gave you a little dusting brush attachment. And as I've said in the past, all these have to be angled just right for them to work which is a little easier to do because this has a hose, but I'm st it's still not great. Now the other little quirk with the tools is when you attach them, uh, it's right here is the lock, but you're gonna tend to hold here and squeeze. And if you do that, it's not gonna lock because you have accidentally hit the button. So you're gonna wanna try to hold it kind of like a C-clamp grip so you don't accidentally hit that. Now the hose is extremely short uh, it's under a meter long. Now they do give you, if we press right there, you can take this off and now you can assemble just like, uh, you know, like a DC-24 or something um, on a Dyson. So the handle does become a small wand. Again, the wand is about arm's length. So the wand with the crevice tool, um, Give you an idea. It goes down to about my knee if I touch the floor. Uh, yeah, it's a little short and the proprietary fitting means you can't get an extension wand at this point. I hope in the future that Loop includes either a, a generic adapter to inch and a quarter, or they at least include a full range of accessories in the future. Now I'm sure somebody who has a 3D printer could make something happen here, but I think from the factory, it should be included. Let's talk about the controls on the loop. Um, it's a little bit weird. So the plus and the minus button, obviously less or more suction, it defaults to a low setting. In order to clean your floors thoroughly, you will need to put it on its highest setting. And then this button here, depending on the version you have, is either going to stop the roller or slow down the roller. Again, it depends on the version. Uh, I've been able to identify a few different ones of these. When talking to uh, my contact over at Loop, they seem to not be aware of that, so I'm a little bit 
unsure why that is, but that, that is what that is. So this turns on. Now the thing about these controls is this just defaults to the default. It doesn't go back to whatever setting you had. So you always have to turn it on and then set it, which is pretty typical of a lot of the cordless vacuums I've used in the past. Now, I think using this as a lift away is a great idea because if you're gonna go with an upright format, being able to disconnect the power head is great. The problem with this is it's a two-stage process is you're not just hitting the button with your foot, you have to reach down and disconnect this. So it is an extra step and it makes things a little bit well, a little bit awkward. I've gotten pretty good at doing it though. Now, another thing that I was hoping would get better with age, but it really hasn't, is it has a tendency to do this when you're using it. Um, and the angle of which the swivel neck is at, it's at a very strange angle. They, they, if they could adjust this angle, it would be good. Uh, but as of right now, it's kind of awkward and causes it, as you see, to teeter-totter off the floor. Now when you have it on, and you can see there, it, it drags and really catches on the floor when you try to twist it. So it's not a very natural swivel. Now perhaps the best part about the loop is it stands up by itself. When you go to use it, it just locks in place, which means you don't have to drill a hole in your wall. You don't have to hold the machine. It just works. So it solves the problem of stick backs, which I've stated before why I don't like stick vacuums, and that's one of them, they don't stand up by themselves. So the fact that this stands up by itself, like a traditional upright, is really nice. Now, another thing I would say, with a lot of stick vacs, you have to hold the button, either a trigger or a press button. This is just very simple, on, off. It does that for you. You don't have to try to fiddle something out. The removable battery is a nice welcome suggestion. The battery has indicator lights on it, which seem to be pretty accurate. And you can order this with one or two batteries. Let's talk about the loop nozzle. Uh, it's very strange and it's definitely a perpetuation of Dyson's marketing department influencing engineers. So I have another nozzle next to it that has been around for over 20 years. It's commercially available. It's got a DC motor. It's made by Vessel Work. Uh, out of Germany and they, they could have just purchased this and put it on this product and it would have been a slam dunk. Uh, instead they decided to go the hard way and design their own nozzle and again they had a lot of influence from Dyson's marketing uh, team which creates a lot of problems or talks about a lot of problems that really just don't exist and as a technician I don't eat up any of that marketing. Uh, one of those things is a soft roller. So what they've done is make this really cushy, weird, soft roller. And the idea is this allows big objects to pass into the nozzle. Uh, in actuality, uh, it just adds mechanical compl complication. It doesn't need to be there for hard floor pickup. If they had just included just the one brush, this would perform exactly the same. Um, in fact, maybe even a little better. The Again, reasoning behind that is for big objects to pass through it, and this will squish down. That's also pushing the object into your floor, potentially scratching your floor, versus just using the straight suction of the machine. Of course, this is a cordless machine. It doesn't have a whole lot of suction. Um, now, they did borrow an existing brush roller out of a robotic vacuum, which is a questionable decision. And then, as I showed in my unboxing video, um, these bearings came with no lubricant. Now I've been testing this for about a month and you can see there is already hair and stuff stuck in there. Um, oh, we got a, something stuck in there that it couldn't pick up. Uh, and things have repetitively gotten stuck on both sides of this roller, I've noticed, and you'll hear it when you're using it. Now I do like that it's easy to get to, easy to clean, and the rollers just pop right out of here. So, and again, this is easily replaceable, but again, there's, there's stuff stuck in the bearings. The bearings came to me with no lubrication. Uh, uh, another thing is the shape of this uh, isn't particularly great for airflow. So the air has to get sucked in from somewhere. I'm gonna demonstrate this with a simple upholstery tool. 
you see you just push it along, it's going to snow plow. But if you lift it up and allow a little bit of air to go through, stuff blows right in. And that's basically the problem with the loop nozzle, is there's nowhere for air to flow in through the sides, through the bottom. It has to go through that soft roller. Now, I have a whole video explaining why soft rollers are a bad idea, but basically it's adding unnecessary complexity with this nozzle. So I hope they come out with a new nozzle and redesign this better for version 2. Welcome to the in the shop portion of the review where I take it apart and talk about maintenance and how the machine's made. The first thing I want to talk about is Loop's strange decision to go with a bagless cleaner. Uh, as we know, bags are easier and cheaper to maintain, but let's talk about maintaining this. So we've talked about emptying this. Um, the cyclone pack comes out and I like that you can just take this out and you will probably need to rinse this and clean this out occasionally as it gets packed with dirt. I'd recommend wearing an N95 mask while you do this. Um, the filter, the pre-motor filter, separates into two pieces for cleaning and you can rinse this out. The uh, bin assembly is also uh, easy enough to take out. Again, I would rinse this and let this sit overnight occasionally. Unfortunately, I did find that it, it jams up right here. There's a very small curve. You can see my finger barely fits in there. Um, so make sure that's clear. And like I said, rinse this out, let the whole thing dry overnight at least. Uh, the cyclone pack might take a couple days to dry, so just be careful with that. So that's how all that comes apart. And all that's easy enough, so it's a lot easier to maintain than some of the Dysons. So I give them credit for that. Again, there is room that they could have put a bag in the same form factor. And, you know, wink wink, Lupe, please do that. Um, the HEPA filter is right here. You'll need to change this every six months to a year. They don't give you a time of which to change any of these filters, unfortunately. So I'm just gonna go based on my experience with a machine like this. Inside the loop uh, was kind of a mixed bag. They did use stainless steel T10 screws, so I like that. Most of everything I saw had the same screw. There was no sound insulation by the motor, which was strange. So part of the noise issue we see with the loop really is uh, just due to lack of sound insulation. The board was partially stabilized with epoxy uh, on top of the motor. The motor was actually made by a fan manufacturer who made computer fans, so I like that. Everything else was easy to get to. Everything had quick, quick disconnects, and all the quick disconnects had been glued. So again, for never have been, been in this machine before, it came apart really easily. As far as the nozzle is concerned, it came apart easily enough. There were two like hidden screws on the side. Uh, it actually comes apart similar to a shark nozzle of all things. Post edit here, it looks like my nozzle head footage didn't save properly on the SD card, so I apologize about that. There are two separate motors in there. And two separate drive trains. One has a bearing, one has a sleeve bearing. So you do need to go through and lubricate the inside of this at some time. Why they didn't use a double cartridge bearing, I'm not sure. We're going to do the performance review pickup test, and if you're new to the channel, that means we're going to use a studio mic, so you're going to hear the real sound of the machine. Headphones warning, it's really loud. We got breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. We're going to use it on its maximum setting. Let's see how it does. A small piece of cat litter and a little bit of the fine flour left behind. Uh, as you can see, this roller is designed not to snow plow. I do want to note that a lot of debris gets stuck in the roller when you use it. You can see the flour there stuck on that soft roller. So I would highly recommend after you're done using this, you want to let it run for a few seconds and clean itself out. We're going to do that same test on the carpet with the breakfast cereal, flour, cat litter, and fresh pet hair. Everything will be on the highest setting. Let's see how that did. A little bit of 
breakfast cereal on the edge. I don't think it edge cleans very well. Uh, we got a little bit of pet hair left behind. And then it seems to have worked the cat litter into the carpet. I can't actually grab the pieces, but I can feel that they're in the carpet here. Um, and then you can kind of see the flowers. So not the best carpet cleaning, though I think this machine's really for hard floors and area rugs was its original design intent. These are the standard adapters I would normally use when trying to convert something uh, so that I can test its working vacuum. In this particular case, Loop has decided to use a really small diameter uh, fitting. I don't have any adapter that will work, so we are going to have to resort to a little duct tape. So let's see how much working vacuum the Loop gets. About 70 sealed, 20 working inches of water. So what we're seeing in terms of power compared to other machines, this is on par with something like the V11, V15. It's on par with Henry Cordless. It's not quite at the numbers that LG has, but they're, they're somewhat healthy numbers for a cordless machine. Of course, a normal plugged-in vacuum is going to get above 30 on this gauge, usually around 40 to 50, and central vacuums would get like 80 to 90. So as far as stair cleaning, the loop does really well. It, um, you know, it balances on the stairs and then you can separate it into the lift away mode so you don't have to carry the head. But then when you do that, you pull the handle off, you lose your tool holder. There's no, they could have just molded onboard tool storage there and they chose not to. Let's see how this does on the maximum suction setting with this uh, upholstery tool. Well, I have to say those results surprised me. The upholstery tool is not particularly good at removing pet hair. It is good for large objects, as you saw at the breakfast cereal. Uh, but he really had trouble picking pet hair. There's still a bit of pet hair I left put down, uh, left behind. I just want to note, I did have some emails back and forth with Loop. They are developing a rotating brush tool that will be available in the future. As far as low places go, the nozzle design doesn't really allow it to lie flat easily. Um, it will kind of go, but not all the way without hitting this hose, which means this hose is going to wear out. Let's give it a try. And unfortunately the wand doesn't really go very far either. Let's go over some final thoughts on the uh, Lupe cordless machine. It's hard floor cleaning is decent. The weight distribution is down low. It stands up by itself. It's got about 20 minutes of battery life. It has an onboard hose and a set of tools. Uh, so th that's excellent. Th that is all excellent. I think the cons on this is its carpet cleanup was some of the worst I've seen in this price point. The soft roller is just a bad idea, and I wish they would have used a commercially available nozzle that would have definitely given this uh, more points. The lack of airflow to the nozzle again is an issue. Um, I'm not trying to beat the dead horse. Um, the other con is it's not really any more powerful than any of the other cordless machines. It's the same as like a V11. It's the same as a Henry cordless. So uh, at least it's not subpar. The other thing is the noise level on this machine is absurd. I don't know what they were thinking after we saw in the shop that there's no sound insulation around the motor in that real high speed motor. I, I really wish they had put some sound insulation from the factory. Uh, the other thing is I experienced uh, multiple clogs in the cyclone and emptying a bagless machine is just a hassle and I don't see any reason to do it this way when they could have put a bag 
and still kept it in the same format. Uh, in fact, I, I think I'm going to work on a prototype for them to help them out. My conclusion on this is I look forward to there being a Loop 2.0 version of this. I think if Loop can sell products and enough people buy this, they will produce a better product the second go around. At least that's what I believe. They seem very passionate about that. So as far as a company, again, this is like Tesla. You're buying it because you're investing in the technology, not because this is the best option out there. Uh, and I think if you had to do quick pickups on hard floor in your house and you want a secondary vacuum, this is not the worst option in the world. Though I, I would heavily consider the Lind House and the Henry Cordless over it for those purposes. I think if you wanted the upright format, that would be another reason to buy that, is that you liked this upright format. That's my review of the Loop Cordless. Now they did send this to me for review. They did, no money has exchanged hands. As you can see, it's getting a great review. But again, I think a second version of this will be better, hopefully, in the future. Check out Patreon if you're not a member of our Patreon subscriber. Uh, they get exclusive videos and content, and I'll also post on Patreon my video to Loop in terms of how to improve their product and what changes need to be made, so that'll be on Patreon as an exclusive. Uh, keep an eye out for my repair video because I do have a full-length repair video coming on this as well. So hit that subscribe button, the bell notification for that, and have yourself a wonderful day.